Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create an RGB keyboard in Blender. I'm going to be talking over how to model the keyboard and then we're going to create the material together so we can get that nice gradient effect. Of course the first thing that we need to do is delete the default cube. Press X and then delete it and then add in a reference image. This reference is going to help us place the keys in the exact spot and it is linked in the description. You can press Alt-R to reset the rotation, and then let's add in a plane. This is going to be the keys. We're going to scale it down and then place it over on the left shift button. You can scale it out and then add in a couple of loop cuts. If you take a look at keyboards in general, they're going to have a little bit of an indent. Let's do that here by using proportional editing and bringing down the loop cuts. Drag it up just slightly so it's above the reference image, and then let's duplicate it and place it for the rest of the keys. I'm going to go into edit mode and then duplicate it. We're going to scale them out and then place it on all of the keys and this part is a little bit long so I'm going to speed it up for you. Once you have finished adding all of the rest of the keys, let's create the frame of the keyboard. Add in a new cube and scale it out to match the frame. After this, we're going to add in a ton of loop cuts to match where the keys are. We're going to be extruding this part down, so just add in a bunch of loop cuts and then extrude it down once you have finished it. Now of course we don't want our keys to look extremely flat, so let's extrude them down. After you've extruded them down, switch the pivot point to individual origins and scale them out so they have a little bit of an angle. If you get some intersection with the space bar, just grab both of the edges and bring them in. After this, let's select the bottom half of the keys and separate it by selection. This is going to be the glow underneath all the keys. Switching it back to individual origins for the pivot point, let's scale them down so they're slightly smaller. And the last bit is just a little bit of basic modeling to make the keyboard have some more interest by beveling the front and making it the back edge at an angle. And then making it the front of the keyboard slightly longer. You can also right click and shade it smooth and then if you open up the normals you can turn on auto smooth to make it look good. Now before we continue on, I wanted to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes taught by professionals. I've been using Skillshare for quite a while now and I can definitely recommend it. There are so many classes on this platform that you'll never run out of things to learn. One class I can recommend is Advanced Video Editing in Premiere Pro by Jordi Vandepoot. Jordi's way of teaching keeps you engaged the whole time and I had a ton of fun going through this class. Now I can edit my tutorials faster and with higher quality. Skillshare is designed specifically for learning. This means that there's going to be no ads and they're constantly adding new premium classes. This way you can stay focused and learn whatever topic you want without any interruption. Speaking of topics, there are so many to choose from. Some of them include photography, illustration, graphic design, video editing, and even Blender. So here is the deal that I have for you today. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership on Skillshare. This will give you access to every single class on the platform. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or the pinned comment and start learning something new today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into creating an RGB keyboard in Blender. Now that we have all of the modeling done, let's work on the material together. The first thing that we need to do is UV unwrap the top of this. To do this, we're going to go into top view, then go into edit mode. Make sure the top half is selected and then let's project this from the view. I'm going to position right here and go U and project from view. Now let's open up the UV image editor and position the UV map accordingly. Switch this over to the UV image editor, then click on open and we're going to be using this keyboard texture right here. Select it and go open image. Currently the, the UV map is a little bit stretched, so let's press S and then X and scale it down. Then we'll scale the entire thing up. This part is a little bit annoying because what you have to do is position every single one of these keys in the exact position, but you want to get it roughly in the same spot and then you can zoom in on some of the uh, keys and then position them. 
So I'll box select all of these and G to move and then we'll place it right in the correct spot. So I'm going to fast forward this part and place all of these keys in the exact position that we need and then we'll move on to the material. And there we go, we've now finished placing all of the keys in the correct position, so now let's control space to get out of full screen and switch it over to the shader editor. Let's give it a new material, and this material we're first going to add that texture that we just used. So go underneath image texture and add it in. This is going to be the factor for the emission. We'll place it on the top right here and then add in another shader, this is going to be the emission shader. We'll place it underneath. And then finally, we'll add in the mix shader to mix them both together. We're going to take the emission and plug it into the top input. Then the color from this texture is going to be the factor. Let's set the base color down to a nice black so we can see what we're doing. As you can see already, this emission is working properly. We can change the glow right here and the strength of it. To actually get that gradient effect, we're going to be using a color ramp. I'm going to bring this window out a little bit more so we have some more room and let's add in a converter and color ramp and we'll place it here. We'll take the color, plug it into the emission, and then change the color using these handles. We basically want to fill out the entire color wheel. So this one on the left is going to be a red color. We'll add in a new handle. This handle is going to be a nice yellow color. We'll add in another handle and we're just going to go all the way around. And finally, the last handle is going to be that exact red that we just used. So click on the eyedropper tool and select the red right there. Since we're going to be creating a looping animation, we want to make sure both ends of the color ramp share the exact color. As you can see though, it's currently not working, so what we need to do is press Shift A, go underneath Input, and then add in a texture coordinate node, and a mapping node as well. Let's take the UV map and plug it into the vector, then the vector into the factor of the color ramp. As you can see, it's kind of working, but it's at an, a weird angle. So what we need to do is actually rotate this along the Z direction. So with the Z rotation, let's type in 45. Now what happens is if we move the X location, you're going to see the gradient is moving along. But at a certain point, the entire thing becomes red and it doesn't change. So how do we loop this color ramp? Well, we can do that very easily by adding in a converter and a math node. Instead of the add function, we're going to be using the modulo function right here. Now what happens is if we take the mapping node and change the X direction, it's going to constantly loop that color ramp. The falloff is a little bit weird, so underneath the value, let's bring that up to 1 so it's a lot smoother of a transition. Now if we take the X location, it's going to give us a nice smooth gradient as you can see. If you want a looping animation, what you need to do is set this to a value of 3 or 6 or 9 or any division of 3. That will be the entire loop. You can see here, if I switch it over to 3, it doesn't change at all. If I switch it over to 6, it also doesn't change. So that is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be setting this down to 0, and then hit I while hovering over it to add in a uh, keyframe. Then we'll skip all the way to frame 200, switch this up to 6, and add in another keyframe. Let's select the mapping node and you make sure that these two keyframes are using the linear transition, so switch it over to linear. As for the glow underneath the keys, we're going to select plane 001 and give it that same material which is this one right here. Before you delete anything else, make sure you duplicate this so it doesn't get rid of the actual keys. We don't need the texture, the principal shader, or the mix shader. Go ahead and delete all of those. Then take the emission and plug that into the surface of the material output. We also need to make sure that the UV map matches the other UV map as well so the glow will appear the same color as it travels throughout. So in order to do this, we need to go into top view. I'm going to go into edit mode and select everything, click on U and then project from view. Then let's switch it over to the UV image editor and place this in the right spot. So I'm going to scale this down, scale the entire thing up and then place it exactly where the other UV map was. You don't have to be very precise with this though, just place it right about there so it lines up with the edges just like that and you should be good to go. The other thing to note is that this is not going to really work in the EV render engine since objects don't emit light. So instead we need to switch over to cycles and then you should see the glow underneath. If you want it to glow brighter, all you have to do is change the emission strength. Let's go up to a value of 15. Once we do that, this is the effect that we're getting. And the next step is just to add in a scene around the keyboard. You can add in a cord coming out, a floor with a wood texture, a screen in the background, anything you want, it's all up to you. 
But that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you learned something new or created your own scene, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. That's going to do it. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.